Hi, my name is Josh Charo. I'm a photographer and I'm making a book on the last generation of artists protected by the 1982 Loft Law. I saw this building might have coverage, so I wanted to see, are you by any chance one of those tenants? Soho was once the epicenter of manufacturing in New York. However, globalization in the 1950s left hundreds of these cast iron buildings empty. The only people willing to rent the lofts were artists. They had no heat, no electricity, and no plumbing but they had tall ceilings and huge windows. It was illegal to live in these spaces, but the landlords in the city had looked the other way for many years because they were making money and they were reinventing a neighborhood that they thought had no future. I moved in September 77. You can't imagine. At nighttime, there were no street lights. And the, uh, the businesses were uh, folding up. They were empty buildings on the corners, most of them. I'm 96 years old. When I moved here, the Bowery was a much different place than it is now. I think the rent was 300 bucks when I got here, and even that was difficult. This whole area was just completely a no man's land. It was very industrial. There was something about it that uh, captured the imagination. The early loft tenants in the 50s and 60s would traditionally get a five or 10 year lease and do most of the fixturing, it was raw space. So let's say 1964 to 1974. Come 1973, early 1974, the landlord comes in and says, wow, this is fabulous. What you've done here is great. Get out. Between the intrigue of loft living and the finite number of loft buildings, uh, there was nowhere else to move. So at that point, people decided to fight. I think a lot about how an artist interacts with their space. That space becomes who they are. All these artists organized Save Our Loft, and we went up to Albany one day, rented two full-size buses, and uh, went up there and went office to office talking to people. I went up with a stroller, taking my kids up there to spend the day lobbying uh, the politicians to tell them how important it was. And in June of 1982, the loft law was adopted. At the time, there was said to be tens of thousands of artists living in lofts across New York City. Today, there are only a few hundred left under the original loft law. Loft law was in flux for 30 years. From day to day, we never knew whether we would be able to stay. It was not a secure situation. And it's still not secure, <laughs> you know? What the hell am I going to get rid of it for? It's, it's huge, it's fantastic. I mean, I've got everything here I, I need to, to work. I don't know if I'd be in the art. You know, I may have left, I may have stopped being an artist. I mean, there's so many people that stop being an artist at a certain point because it's just too hard. Yeah. It's too hard to find time for it, if you have to have a full-time job to pay rent and expenses. New York City is so rare and unique in this way because it has these buildings and it has these people. It's the people that are able to stay here and to stay in these spaces that otherwise would never have this chance and this opportunity. And it gives New York its character. It's the makeup of, of why New York is such an interesting place.